Hey, Profiteers, Kara here. Are you listening to this podcast, but you thought you'd be watching a video? My video's over on YouTube. My podcasts have episode numbers, and they all have the same art. My YouTube episodes all have different YouTube thumbnails. Look for the thumbnail that says Behind the Treats, Rosie Castro of Pup Delicioso. That's the video for this episode. Hey, Baker, do you want to launch your own dog treat business and make money for your family? Are you discouraged with just giving your dog treats away to friends and family instead of having booming online sales? Do you want to be home more to bake treats and make money selling them online, but you keep telling yourself that you don't know enough healthy dog treat recipes or even have the business or Instagram know-how to make it all happen? Girl, I hear you. In this podcast, you'll find natural dog treat recipes and the secrets to launching your own dog treat business and tips for growing a successful dog treat business. Hi, my name is Kara Brothers, and I learned how to make and sell healthy dog treats that customers want to buy and dogs love. And I started my very own successful dog treat business. Want to know how I did it? Give your dog a treat, grab one for yourself, and let's dig in. It's Kara with Positive Profit. Thanks for joining me on another episode. Today we have a special guest, Rosie Castro from Pup Delicioso. Hey, Rosie, how's it going? Hello, I'm going great. Thank you so much. Thank you for having me. Yeah, it's my pleasure. This is part of the Meet the Baker series from the Dog Treat Baker Facebook group that you're a member of. And it's just been so much fun to highlight members and the journey of their dog treat business. And everyone has a unique story. There is a common thread, obviously, which pulls us together. But I just love hearing how everyone started and what they're doing and what their specialties are. And it really does help new bakers coming on board to this whole experience of just a taste of what this business could look like for them. Yeah, I'm really excited to have you. And thank you so much for joining me on the interview today. Um, how did you get started? How did you come up with the name? Your origin story. We started our journey. Uh, in 2022, my brother would, several friends told me, you should start selling dog food. And I'm like, no, like, is he not ready to do it for my dog? Anyway, one day last year in February, 2023, I'm washing dishes. And I'll never forget, I'm looking out the window. It's a beautiful day. I'm washing dishes. And I'm thinking to myself, like, how can I increase my revenue stream? And something, a word dropped in my spirit that said, like, here's day, start selling dog food. And I was just like, okay. I met with my family that night for dinner, and I come sharing with them. I think it's supposed to be selling or start selling dog food. And I wasn't sure. <laughs> my journey started there. So for a few months, I started researching, maybe reformulating, practicing new recipes. And during that research, I came across starting a dog treat business. And I was like, oh, I think that would go hand in hand. And I love to bake too. Like I bake for my family, cookies, cakes, we have celebrations. I'm the one that, that tends to bake. So anyway, so I just thought like, how hard could adding dog treats be? <laughs> so anyway, so then I started that journey. I found a course that I did and it gave me some insight. So then probably for about eight months, I researched dog treat business and dog food at the same time. So I got research and, and applied for my license. And even applying for my license was... A bit of a journey. I, I kept on getting denied and I couldn't understand why. Mm. What was and I finally spoke. And I actually, during that time, I was really discouraged. Okay, maybe I'm not supposed to be in this industry. It was a little bit confusing. So I finally talked to somebody from the Department of Agriculture here in Texas. And actually, there was miscommunication. My everything was fine with the application. So I went through. I got the license in September of last year, and I began sometime in September. I first introduced the the dog treat side because I wasn't quite ready with the, the dog food labeling and so forth. But my journey, I do believe this with all my heart, that this business is a gift from God. Because every, I don't consider myself like super creative, but everything like the name was dropped in my spirit 
the colors were dropped in my spirit. For about three months, I've been looking for a logo and I would see things and I would try to play with things and it just wasn't it. And I came across somebody's talk video and I saw a, she, the person did a pet logo and I loved it. I reached out to her. She's actually from the UK. So the person who created my branding lives in the UK. So it was really neat to co-partner with her and and just all the details were so important to me because I'm just like, I, I've got to take care of this brick. Uh, and so Puck Delicia also just kind of like came up. And I also wanted to throw a little bit of, I'm not being asked, so I wanted to throw a little bit of like Latin flavor in there. I'm from Texas too. So we have a lot of text mess is a big theme here. I was trying to put that together, but it, it didn't necessarily work out. So Puck Delicia also with the colors just kind of stayed what it just manifested. That's pretty much, I'm trying to think of what else I want to share. Like I said, uh, we did our first market. I jumped in the market, uh, the pop-up market right away. So I did my first one in October, mm -hmm. right before the Halloween seasons. And people have just been very accepting of us at, at the, uh, the market. So it's been a pleasure doing that. You know, going back to what you had said, that this is a gift from God, I know when he put something on your heart and it is from him like the doors open and things just start coming and that sounds like what happened with you even like with your logo and then how all that worked out and your colors are amazing they are so fun so whimsical so perfect for dogs because that's Thank what you. they are they're fun they're whimsical like I really associate just like your lettering your coloring your whole logo with exactly what you do. And it's rare to see something like yours. So yours really stands out. It's very unique and I love it. So thank you. Thank you. Yeah. You could tell a lot of work went into that and it's perfect. And I checked out your Instagram, like all your highlights are like perfectly matched. Like your branding is on point. I have to say, girl, you're doing it. That it was, I believe this wholeheartedly, the girl who the girl who I found, I'm like, I was meant to find you. She mm -hmm. had an opening. She's very, very busy. She had an op She happened to have an opening for, for a new client. And I'm like, I'll take it. But yeah, it was just, yeah, just so meant to be with her. Just how it all fell into place. Cool. So you've been doing markets really from the jump, right? When you started, you're like, I saw your video too of your first market. Got to say that was the cutest reel ever or video ever oh my gosh you have your whole family there I love just the whole family spirit and that's something that I really connected with because when I started as well my whole family was like this isn't it really takes a village to do this job this is not a one person job no. um I guess you could do it if you were doing it like maybe on a smaller scale, but when you do something like this, you know, your family even has dogs and they want to get involved and it just makes it so much better. And you can spread that joy throughout your family. And then obviously they'll tell people about your business too. <laughs> the extra help yeah. is nice. Yes. Do you do this business primarily by yourself or do you have a main helper that like really helps you out or how do you run this? So for the most part, it is. I, I am by myself doing the bulk of, of the labor work, the, the baking, the dehydrating. I have my niece and, and because we were working together so much last year, like the last quarter of the year with Publicioso, she would go to work and then after work, she'd come help me and stay for a couple of hours and help me <laughs> with the process. So we just kind of, she coined us like besties. This is oh, my niece. Yeah. So my niece has been with me quite a bit and she's very talented and creative. She's the one that has made most of my videos. So she takes the footage, she puts them together. And so it's been her when you say take the village. So mm -hmm. my niece will help me with the labor. Occasionally my family has come when I've asked them like, Hey, I really need a house. Can somebody dedicate some time? They'll come and, and they'll help. But at the markets, hands down, my family is always there. They're ready to support me. And sometimes I don't even invite them to, to come <laughs> because I, it took three markets to discover like, there's way too many of us. And my family were very close knit. So at one point there was like 10 or 12 of us at my tent. I'm like, <laughs> okay, that's way too many people. Um, so I've had to cut down. So I usually I'll, I'll try to be as strategic as possible. 
have 2,000 people and then have one person capturing uh, data, like who we're selling to, how much, and so forth, and taking pictures. So yeah, so my family, yeah. So I have my niece, and who is super talented, like I said, and then my family is, they're physically there. I had a, my last market, I was this past Saturday, and I'm just tremendously blessed. This past Saturday, my sisters and my niece went to go set up for me. So they got up early. They came to my house, picked up all the, the treats and all the uh, equipment, went to the venue to go set up. And they were there for about four hours before I could get there because I had a prior engagement. And, and they stayed for a couple more hours, but, and they have no problem. Like sometimes I feel bad because I, I can't pay them. <laughs> and they're like, we want to be here. So many times they told me like, Rosie, we want to be here. It's okay. We're here to support you. So it's been a little bit difficult for me to receive that too. What a blessing that your family is there, willing, engaged, want to support you. Wow. What love that that's amazing. It's funny. You're right. Like it does take a few markets like to get the hang of, okay, exactly. What are the duties and who's going to do them and how many people do we need? No, I know. I know exactly what you mean. It got to be where I think we had me and my husband, we had about four people at every market. You're right. Because someone is doing the sale. Someone is talking to customers. Someone is bagging up. Someone is taking pictures. So yeah, it's fun. Markets are a lot of hard work, but they're also really rewarding. You get so much from them. You're able to talk to the customer in person. If it's dog friendly, you can pet the dogs, of course. You get a lot of great feedback when you talk to people in person because people, not everyone is going to like your post. Not everyone is going to comment on your post. Not everyone's going to see it, but everyone who comes into that shop, you almost have basically have an opportunity to have a discussion with them and yeah. Plus all the cute pictures you can take and use for your content. You <laughs> it's so funny. One of my questions to you is who's behind the camera for your reels? They're very good. <laughs> and you mentioned it's your niece. Yeah. It's yeah. my niece. It's my niece most of the time. Mm -hmm. uh, this last, and I'm trying to, I'm trying to get into the habit of doing more behind the scenes. And yes. uh, it's a lot of work. So already doing the baking is a lot of work. So for the Valentine's holiday, I just took a moment. I'm like, I put my, my, my phone tripod stand and I was just like recording me bagging up stuff. So it took extra time and then I just put it all together. That was me. But like I said, most of the time it's my sweet niece. I saw your Valentine's day reel and it, it is because if you're busy baking, like you're doing your job. You don't have time for the extra fluff of, okay, I got to set up a tripod and I have to make sure this angle looks good. No, get that off the counter. That is the end of view. It's not going to work. <laughs> yeah. uh, it takes time out of your actual baking job, but it's important because people want to see behind the scenes. It really helps them connect with you as a person. And I have to say that is one of the super cool things I love about how you are managing your business is that you go live. I've seen you like live. I have seen that, you know, um, reels where you're talking to the camera and not a lot of people do that, but that really helps to form another layer of reaching out to the customer that they can connect with you on. And I think you're really nailing it on that point. So, Hey, new bakers. Uh, if you're just joining us, um, into the dog treat business land, I would encourage you to follow in Rosie's footsteps and go live, connect with your customers, do behind the scenes, because it's one thing just to put out pictures of your treats and everybody wants to see those, right? But it's also another thing to say, hey man, I'm a person behind this business, right? Because everyone wants to connect with that too. Makes you human. I want to add to that too, Kara. Uh, there are things that I, I typically don't do. So being on the camera, like taking time to be in front of the camera, make a quick video. There are things that I've had to let go. No, you don't always have to have makeup on and your hair doesn't always have to be a certain way. Just get on and make content. Um, so it has been a little bit of a breakthrough for me to ask myself, like, who do I need to be to get this business off the ground? And it's, you got to get let go of not wanting to do things, feeling uncomfortable. What if somebody doesn't like it or you don't get a lot? I have to let those things go to be able to do these videos. 
and I may, I don't know, I may look natural at it, but it's not, it's a bit uncomfortable for me. But having to just put that aside, and like, who does Rosie have to be to X, Y, and Z? Like, you have to, I mean, I've just been learning to step into that. Gosh, good for you. That's funny that you mentioned that because there will come a point pretty much for everyone if you're on this journey and this is something that you aspire to do, go live in front of the camera, do the, the behind the scenes, talk to your audience, your customers, your followers, mm-hmm. is that you're going to probably reach a point like we all do where you're like, okay, I keep putting it off. I know it's something I want to do. I don't feel completely ready, but you're going to have a point where you're just going to do it. You're just going to yeah. do it. And really the first time it may not go as planned. It may not be perfect, but the first time, it's like, okay, I did it the first time. And it, it does get easier the more you do it. But my advice is just start where you are. Things don't have to be perfect and that's okay. Yes, absolutely. I agree. Something else I figured out when doing this business too, is that when I was tackling really tough parts, like a lot of it for me was learning as I went along because I had, I took a course as a lot of people did to figure out how to do this, but there's so much it doesn't teach you that you have to figure out on your own. Because if you want to branch out to say, okay, I want a website or I want to do YouTube or I want to do reels or whatever, and maybe you don't know how to do those things. If you want to spread your wings a little farther, you need to learn those things. And a lot of courses aren't all encompassing. They don't teach you everything. So you've got to navigate that path on your own. And so that means that sometimes you have to like, you know what, I can't Netflix and chill all day. <laughs> you know, I, I, I have to I'll put off that binging to really go forth through that big stuff and really soak in the knowledge to be able to benefit you and your business to ultimately be- benefit your family. There are some sacrifices that have to be, be made, but it's all about organization. And pretty soon you've learned the thing, you've conquered the thing, you're doing the thing. And now the yeah. thing is easy and it's this ebb and flow. So yeah. keep always keeps it interesting and on your toes. <laughs> that is for sure. So I would like to know about what kind of treats do you make? Like what, what are your, what's your lineup? If I'm going to go to the market, my, I'm for sure taking peanut butter treat and bacon cheddar treats. So those are the ones that I, from the beginning, started to play with the recipes and then just perfected them. And and they're big sellers. They're big sellers for me. I also, occasionally, I'll make s'mores, mini s'mores and pretzels. So I created an assortment box that I take to the markets. And so I'm going to show you, they're they're, they're in a box like this. And I, there's a certain amount, there's like a certain amount of ounces for peanut butter, bacon cheddar, there's one pretzel, and then I put four mini s'mores. So it gives a customer a variety of choices for their dog, and they're great sellers. So it's easy for me to, it's a little bit time consuming to make them, but they, I don't say they fly off the shelf, but they're, they're very popular at the market. And then I also make an almond, an almond and coconut cookie that I take to the markets also. This last market, I wanted to try it out. I made donuts, just mini donuts, and I put them in in a, a box with a dot pattern ribbon, and those sold pretty well. So staple items for sure are going to be uh, my bacon cheddar and my peanut butter. And people are either going to, oh, my dog likes meaty things. Okay, well you're gonna you're gonna want the uh, bacon cheddar. Or my dog loves peanut butter. They're going to go for the uh, peanut butter. Absolutely. It's so funny. Uh, I'll hear dogs tastes have a pretty wide variety. And it sounds like you're actually capturing a lot of that with the bacon cheddar and the peanut butter. Those are two staples that yeah. you're really smart to be offering. And then you also have some soft treats in the assortment box. So all the treats are dehydrated. So I oh, okay. much with salt. All the, yeah, all my treats get dehydrated. Um, I haven't played too much with soft treats. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say I, I'm a little bit scared because I haven't tested it out and I don't know how quickly that they would mold but I'm telling mm-hmm. you, I do want to start tapping into a little bit of not dehydrating the treats because when my bacon cheddars come out they smell so delicious and they look just nice and squishy yeah. uh, a roll from Olive Garden 
like you're just like ready to just grab it just that's what my bacon cheddar looks like so then whenever they come to the dehydrator they look dry and deflated so i would love to to offer more softer treats too i just i don't have the background in how long they would last and not spoil and so forth we'll talk <laughs> we'll talk Okay. So it sounds like you have your lineup. So you're working on, maybe you're going to offer your bacon cheddar that are soft. Is there any new products in the works for you that you're thinking about doing? I, I listened to one of your podcasts uh, last week and you were talking about taking one recipe and formulating it in different ways. I did a, the batch that I use for pretzels. So the pretzels, I have a dough press. So I dough pressed it and I I have a, a cookie cutter that's just square that I use for my s'mores. And I just cut into the dough and it made like little mini squares of the uh, pretzel bites. And my dogs love them. So I'm thinking of, of taking some of the recipes, like the Parmesan in particular, and just creating smaller cookies with that recipe and see how it does. Because I think for small, I, I think about smaller dogs too, where dogs that don't have you may have small teeth or don't have teeth. My sister has a dog and she's like, oh, Taco's not liking some of the treats because he's getting older. He doesn't have all his teeth. And so it's been a little bit difficult for him to bite down. So I was like, okay, I'm going to, I was like, I'm going to work on some softer treats and see how he does with that. So that's something that I do want to work on is taking same recipe, but just maybe doing different shapes with them, smaller versions, maybe not so not dehydrating them and see how they come out. Yeah, exactly. And yeah, exactly. another thing you can do with that recipe is waffles, like waffles. You can uh, put it in a, a, a little mini waffle press and you can make waffles, same recipe. Yeah. And we even have, there is a, an interview that just came out. Oh, it was the first one I did with Diana Hughes. And she did um, the small little hearts and she did the small little tiny waffles. These are small things a big dog could eat them, but a small, they'd be great for a small dog too. So yeah, I love using idea. one recipe many different ways. Yeah. You mentioned that you had somewhat of a difficult time with your registration and getting it approved and it turned out to be a miscommunication. Was it like, did you have a challenge with the size, the placement of the label or the wording on the label? Or do you remember what was the hold up there? So I want to go back. I think I first called uh, the Department of uh, the DOA for Texas in July, and they told me that their fiscal year starts in September. So prior to July, I'm like, okay, I'm going to get this license. We're going to do this. We're going to start the dog treat business, blah, blah, blah. And then I find out either June or July that it's best to wait for September because then I would have to repay the fee again and so forth. So that was kind of a bummer that I had to wait a few more months. So when I sent it, so then now I'm actually sending in the information. The first time I, when I, on my labels, I wrote the max and the min for the Garrison analysis incorrect. So that was the first, I think that was the first time where I got denied. And I can't remember the exact, uh, the second time I was given this Excel sheet to put the guaranteed analysis formula on, and I didn't really understand what is it. And instead of asking, I just did, I just put the information uh, the way I thought it needed to be. <laughs> I sent it in. And again, I'm getting the rejection letter back. And these are like weeks going by. So I'm like, okay, what is going on? So I find, and actually the second time I felt very discouraged. I was just like, what am I doing wrong? I finally, I was so discouraged that I didn't want to call up the office. Like I just wanted to waddle in my feet. <laughs> and a friend of mine had a conversation and she just got me out of that ride. And so I had a conversation the next day with the uh, DOA. Come to find out that I didn't even need that Excel spreadsheet. Uh, I was explaining to them that I have guaranteed analysis that I sent to a lab. I have all the information, but I needed to send it to them. And they're like, uh, no, it's fine. Just don't worry about the Excel spreadsheet. So that was a miscommunication. <clears throat> I'm not sure why they even attached it or sent it there. But anyway, so I reset my information again and I got the uh, license within a week. Oh my gosh. Wow. What a crazy hold up for something you didn't even need. And I know sometimes with the government, I mean, things just take a long time. <laughs> but you're the one going, oh my gosh, hurry up. That was uh, when I think about just the hurdles like things coming against me and just keep when I 
I just kept on pursuing and I'm just like, okay. And I have to constantly remind myself, like I, my background is in human resources. And I went to human resources because every company needs some sort of human resources. It was safe. But I was like, but the is also so different. So when I come against these hurdles, I'm just like, got to keep on pushing through, keep on pushing through, keep on figuring it out. Keep on asking God for his guidance. So, so yeah, that was, that was me from the start of the business. I was already having issues like that. Oh man. Yeah. When you mentioned the Excel spreadsheet, I thought I've never heard of that. <laughs> I'm not from the state of Texas. I mean, I lived there for a minute, but I mean, I've never sold dog treats there, but I, in the whole dog treat world, I've never heard of having to put your stuff into the Excel. So did you just submit your labels then with the GA analysis right on or the min and max and they, they accepted that? Yes. Whenever, when Texas gives you their information, they actually give you a sample. So I just copied that sample and then put in all my information. I just, for me, I felt it overwhelming. I did register eight products. So it was a lot that I was going through having a detail and I, I just missed it. I just missed the, the incorrect percentages for min and max. But, but yeah, that was the only thing that, that they addressed that they, I needed to correct. Thanks to your tenacity, you kept going and your friend gave you the pep talk. And now we have Pup Delicioso talk. Yes. <laughs> yes. So you don't decorate your treats then I'm imagining, or do you decorate your treats? There. So for Valentine's, I took the almond cookies and I dipped them in the yogurt chips. I saw a carob and the plain. So I dipped them in there and then I bought dried freeze strawberries and I just, I chopped them up and so I would sprinkle, I sprinkle the, the freeze dried strawberries. So that's about the only decorating I do for the treats, but I need to master this before I get into that. But I would love to work on some true decorations in the future. So I love what I see out there. Um, I don't know too much about some of the products that they use. And, and I, I, I'm working on being, as I get deeper into this business, working on the ingredients too, like really considering whether this ingredient needs to be in there or not. And then just taking it out if I feel like we can do it without it. So that's another one you were talking about earlier, you know, doing it and also learning along the way. So that's been another thing too. So I've looked at some of the, the items that you can use to decorate and I've read some of the ingredients and I'm like, I don't know. I was like, I don't think, I don't think I want to play with that right now. So that's, that's where I'm at with the tree decorating. I would love to start making um, cakes, start playing with making just like mini cakes. And I don't want to get too fancy because there's part of me where I'm just like too much of this is, I just make me uncomfortable, but I'm just like, do we really? Does my dog really need that? So I want to work on just making cute, simplistic cakes with fruit on there. I don't know if you have a Whole Foods out there, but we have a Whole Foods here and there's a Chantilly cake and I just love the way it looks. So I'm, I'm wanting to work on recreating the Chantilly cake, but with just much less ingredients. So that's, that's something that's on my list to do or just to play with that cake that has the, the cake, the maybe a bit of frosting and fruit on the, uh, in between the layers and, and so forth. So we'll see, we'll see how that turns out whenever I start practicing. That sounds fun. I've never heard of anyone making that for their dogs. That sounds amazing. Yeah. That sounds cool. I think that is all the questions I have for you. Are you ready for some quick fire questions? Just a couple of little fun, fun questions to get people to know you a little bit better. Yes. Let's do it. I think we've got a few minutes left. Okay. Ready? Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Quick. It's a quick answers. Sunrise or sunset? Sunrise. Rangers or Astros? Astros. <laughs> I saw the videos. Girls wearing earrings. She got the matching shirt. I was like, what? We got some fans in yeah. the house. All right. <laughs> Marvel or DC? Marvel. Instagram or Facebook? Instagram. Lip gloss or lipstick? Lip gloss. Doggy donuts or pup cakes? Doggy donuts. Right on. <laughs> cool. That's fun. That's fun. <clears throat> hey, where are your helpers? I hear you have some adorable yeah. doggies. Let me go get them. I'd love to see. I know we had them on the show for the pet parade. 
but we'd love yeah, to see them in person. I want to say just something really quick on, on that. My brother and my nephew had been helping me, but they were just talking. So I called the, the podcast and once they left, I turned it back on and within whatever, 20 minutes or so, I, I heard you, you were going through the, the pop parade and you come and you say, and this next person is Rosie. And I thought to myself, oh, there's another baker named Rosie. <laughs> I'll send you send her me says it's pop delicioso. And I'm like, what? So it took a minute to remember that I had sent in the information. So anyway, when I heard it, I was like on the moon. I felt so cool and excited. So I was just thankful that you that yeah, you just they shared our, our business and so forth. I shared it for my family. So it was uh, super exciting. Super, super exciting. Oh, that is so cool. I if you're watching and you have pups that you'd like to be featured on the show, when I get enough of them, we'll do the pet parade again and you'll see everyone's little furry friends. So this is Richie. Richie was the one that was smiling in the picture. Yeah. Oh, hi, Richie. Ringo. Yeah, Richie was smiling. I remember that. This is Ringo. He's my little weird dog. So he was my very first dog. So he's my ride or die. I love, I love all my dogs. He was with me through some trying times. I love him. And then where's my car? Get it ready. Get it ready. Oh, camera friend. shy. Oh. This is Benny. She's actually a doxador. So she's half lab, half dachshund. So she's got the she's got the dachshund body with the lab face. Oh, hi, baby. Yeah. Oh my god. Like but uh, oh yeah. So yeah. those are all my babies. Those are my little troopers. Yes, uh, yeah. taste testers. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Oh, cool. Well, thanks for showing your babies. Would you please tell everyone how can they find you and look at your Instagram, see what work you're doing? Yes, th yes, thank you for that. <clears throat> so you can find us on Instagram, TikTok, Facebook. We're at Pub Delicioso. I do have a website, pubdelicioso.com. So yeah, so those are our social media handles that I work with and play with. So yeah, feel free to go like us, share us. If you live in Texas, feel free to buy our treats. <laughs> or if you live in the area, I'm used to it. We're always at various markets and we post them on our, our social media platform where, we'll, where we're going to be at. Awesome. You guys, please go give Rosie a follow. If you're in the area, check out where she's going to be. Go by her booth and say hi. Let her know that you saw her on the show and give her some business. Anyway, yeah. thank you so much for coming on the show, Rosie. It was a pleasure to speak with you and get to learn more about you. Thank you. I appreciate it. Yes. And may your business be blessed too. I love it. Thank you very much. Yours as well. Thank you.